Ginger Annis, Alexander County Veteran Service Officer, and today I'm with Ray Bruder. Ray, tell us a little bit about yourself, your date of birth, uh, where you were born, and where you live. I was born August 28th, 22nd, 1948, in Pittsburgh, and I lived there almost all my life except for military service, and we moved down here a little about a year and a half ago now. Okay. Um, what did you do prior to joining the military? Uh, I was in school. I went to uh, Robert Morris. At that time, it was Robert Morris Junior High, mm -hmm. junior, or junior college. And then I decided I wasn't a school person. Okay. So uh, during one of the school breaks, I went down and I signed up for the Navy. I didn't want to sit around and wait for the draft, so I did the, the four-year tour with the Navy. Okay. How did you feel about the military or war? at that time if there was a war going on? Well, Vietnam was going on. Uh, I felt that we should be there, uh, although there was obviously a lot of conflict as, as to what was going on and right. whether we should or shouldn't, and everybody had to kind of make up their own decision of what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad was the only military person in our family that I knew of. Uh, later found out that <clears throat> his brother was in the, in the Army my dad was in the Navy, and, and that's kind of like why I, I decided to go Navy. Okay. Um, which unit or ship were you with? Uh, I, when I first, out of boot camp, they sent me to Pensacola, Florida. I was stationed at Naval Air Station in Pensacola. Uh, there they were training me to be a storekeeper. Mm -hmm. I was a seaman. Made third class there. From there they sent me to storekeeper school after I learned to be a scorekeeper. <laughs> Uh, from there, they sent me to Keflavik, Iceland, Naval Air Station in Keflavik, and then from there to Vietnam, where I was attached to the USS Krishna. It was a repair ship for mm -hmm. the riverboats. Okay. Um, what's the highest rank you achieved in the military? Second class petty officer, E-5. Okay. And how long did you serve total? Three years, nine months, and two days. <laughs> okay. I didn't count. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll trust that. <laughs> Okay, so you, you actually served a lot of different places. Yes. Explain to me what a storekeeper is. Depends on where you were. Uh, okay. Storekeeper covered a lot of, lot of ground. Uh, when I was in Florida, what we do, were doing then is converting over to con computer mm -hmm. software. And so all the cards had to be punched, which meant that you had to manually go in and do an inventory on each card, and then we turned it over to key punchers. Mm -hmm. When I went to uh, Iceland, my first job there was a uh, surplus warehouse. I was in charge of the surplus, and I was there for maybe two months. Mm -hmm. And then they put me in charge of cold storage, which was all the fresh and frozen food on base came through me. Right. Uh, so we received, once a week we received our supplies, uh, so I was in charge of a working party there. Mm -hmm. Typically, I had three guys working for me. One was an Icelandic gentleman, and then I had two seamen working for me. Mm -hmm. uh, we would have 15 to 20 guys on our supply, resupply. <clears throat> then in Vietnam, I was in charge of the ship's budget. So I was in charge of all the departmental spending and costing and, and stuff like that mm -hmm. and all the month quarterly monthly weekly reports into naval air supply so it was it was a tedious job i was gonna say <laughs> that sounds hard <laughs> it wasn't hard but it was tedious right you sit at a desk all day uh-huh okay um what did you envision the military would be like after you joined i really didn't know uh my dad didn't talk about talk much about at all when he was in. He was in World War II mm -hmm. on the USS Denver. Uh, late, lately I found some of the books and some of the history on the Denver and they were very active in the Pacific. Uh, they were at Midway, they were at uh, the Coral Sea, mm -hmm. a couple of the, the big actions. His ship was hit but never sunk. Uh, he was a yeoman which meant he was another paper pusher. Right. He was, a, I guess, like a secretary. He mm -hmm. did uh, all the administrative work for people coming in and, and stuff like that. So that's kind of like why I leaned toward that, but I didn't want to do that. Storekeeper sounded more like what I wanted to do. So. Okay. <clears throat> and um, 
Tell me again where your basic training was. Great Lakes. Great Lakes. <clears throat> now, is that where everybody went when they joined the Navy, or did they no, have different? They had another training station in California. Uh, most of the people from this this side of the United States went to Great Lakes. Okay. I reported August 12th and uh, finished up in December. Okay. So it was cold. I bet so. Um, do you remember anything about basic training? Were you nervous, excited, scared? Bored. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> when I was when I reported there, because I had a little bit of college, uh, they made me the company clerk, mm -hmm. which meant that I got out of a lot of stuff. I never did any of the the drills. Well, very little of the drills. Mm -hmm. uh, I never did the uh, what do they call that? where you go, the obstacle course, mm -hmm. I never had to do that. Every time that we had something like that, they asked, made sure that I had all my paperwork for the whole company, and they sent me back to the barracks uh -huh. to take care of the paperwork while everybody else went out and did their drills. I was happy with that. I bet you were. <laughs> I think I would have been happy. <laughs> uh, do you remember any of your instructors, and if you do, what stands out about them? Our company commander was a chief. Uh, his wife was pregnant, mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's, and he missed a lot. And so we all th so had a, uh, like, he was just a kid just finished basic training, and all of a sudden he became our company commander or co-company commander, whatever they called him. He was a squirrely little kid. <laughs> oh, mercy. And, and he just thought he was, you know, he could just run all over us, and mm -hmm. it was kind of like, no, nah, no. Nah. We're, you know, when you're new in in the Navy, and you're basic training, everything is kind of like, what are we allowed to do? What aren't we allowed to do? But we knew he was stepping over the line, so right. we kind of disregarded him a lot. But okay. the Marines did our all our drills. Uh, Marines are Marines. They're tough, mm -hmm. you know. But when you're learning all that stuff, you never ever think you're ever going to use any of it. He's right. like, well, this is a total waste of time, but mm -hmm. eventually you find out why you're, why you're doing it. Right. <laughs> um, did you make any friends while you were in the military, and do you still keep in touch with them? I made friends. Uh, probably the only ones I stay in touch with the ones I stayed uh, stationed on the ship with. Okay. And I didn't find most of them until the Internet kind of what opened up a little bit. And, mm -hmm. uh, I find I had a really good friend I was stationed with. He was another storekeeper and I found him. He lives in Washington, D.C. Uh, I've been able to get together with him and his wife a couple times and through him I met up a couple others. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a story on on the web and a couple people have found me through that. Okay. Uh, I've been able to reach out to both of my, we had two ship captains while I was on board and I was able to to talk to both of them that that's always been been nice and mm -hmm. and a few others I've you know between stories and just be most of it's been email but I've been able to talk to you know either in person or over the phone to, to quite a few well very good um, what did you think of your officers <clears throat> Except for the little squirrely one. <laughs> well, he wasn't even an officer. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, most of them were pretty good. Uh, the first ship captain we had, he passed away last year. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a very disciplined person. I mean, we had inspections. In Vietnam, you just didn't do inspections, I didn't think. But we right. had one every morning. Oh, wow. So you always had two sets of clothes. You had your inspection clothes, and then you went down and changed into your work clothes. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was, again, it just didn't seem to make sense to me. You know, you had to have all your, at that time, everybody was coming on board or out of the river boats, and these guys were ragged looking. Uh, we were, always had to be clean shaven, mm -hmm. good haircuts, spit shine shoes, pressed pants, which meant you laid on, on them underneath your bunk. That's how we pressed our clothes. Right. <laughs> and, uh. But for the most part, they were they were very good officers. I, mm -hmm. I felt I, I we had two supply officers uh, that I really liked. They were really good guys. Well, good. Um, what's your most memorable experience in the military? Uh, the night we were hit in Vietnam, July fifth, nineteen seventy. Okay, you want to tell us about <coughs> that? When I reported, uh, we first spent three months at. We were about. 
five miles offshore. And the repair boats, we, the boats would come out to us, and we would repair them, and they'd send them back up the river, and then they'd get shot up and would come back to us again. We repaired the PBRs, the swift boats, the monitors, the tangos, all any of the boats were in the river, they came out to us repair. Mm -hmm. We had two pontoons beside us, two barges, and we lifted them up on the barges and we repaired them. Well, the Navy thought that it would be a better idea if they sent us up the rivers rather than having the boats come out to us. And the very first night we were up there, we were hit. Mm -hmm. Bigger target. Uh, uh, yeah. Sitting still in the middle of the river, and you're anchored, and it's just a bigger target. And we got hit the very first night we were there. Were there any casualties from your unit? We lost one person. He wasn't attached to our ship. He was attached to uh, one of the swift boats on side. Mm -hmm. Lanny Burroff, he was a quartermaster, second class from Chicago, Illinois. Okay. What weapons were you assigned to? Uh, 50 caliber when I was in Vietnam. When I was in Iceland, I was attached to a 105 howitzer with a 50 caliber mounted on top. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was everyday life like? Pretty boring. <laughs> uh, for the most part. I mean, it was, uh, we weren't, we weren't, I wasn't one of the <coughs> people working on the boat, so I never really got to meet most of the crews that were right. on the boat. So it was a small group of people you worked with day to day. I worked at a desk. Mm -hmm. uh, so you became real familiar with the guys that were doing the work, but you didn't become familiar with the guys that were attached to, to the boats that were on, on, on board. Okay. It was, uh, we find ways to entertain ourselves. We, we played games, we played cards, we watched movies, we did, we wrote a lot of letters. Mm -hmm. uh, was the food good and did you have enough to eat? Food was really good. I've heard uh, that about the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good for us because the cooks slept in the same quarters that we did. Uh huh. So we didn't necessarily have to eat with the rest of the crew. Okay. And we didn't necessarily eat what the rest of the crew was eating. So we, we ate pretty well in the Navy. Oh, and when okay. I was in Iceland and I was in charge of the fresh and frozen food, I ate really well. Oh, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> I became real good friends with the, uh, there was a, Rockville was a, a little Air Force outlet uh -huh. up there in, uh, I used to go up there, and I could spend a week up, a weekend up there and eat and drink really well. Well, good. Um, and your living conditions um, on the ship, did you, you had your own room or you shared room? We had a, a compartment. Okay. Uh, the bunks were three high. Your locker was underneath your bed. Your mattress was about that thick, and you had about that much room above your head. <laughs> Okay, so not a <laughs> lot of space. No. We'll get a picture of this later. Okay. Um, <clears throat> um, but you, I mean, you were able to have three hot meals and yes. showers <clears throat> and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, the only night we were forced to sea rats was the night we were hit. We were hit at 10 o'clock at night, and we had sea rats at battle stations that night. Okay. Didn't know what you were eating, but you had food. Right. Um, how did you keep in touch with people back home? You said that you wrote a lot of letters. Wrote a lot of letters, and we did a lot of uh, cassette tapes. At oh, that okay, time. okay. Not many phone calls home, and that kind no, of. No. Uh, after our ship was hit, we went and they towed us into uh, Saigon for dry docks, mm -hmm. and I was able to get a phone call home to, just in case anybody heard right. that the ship was hit. We were not a, a well-known ship, and it never showed up in any of the papers or news or anything. So. Okay. So nobody at home knew about it and worried till yeah. you, they heard from you. So that's good. How did you handle being away from home and family? It was good for me. Uh, I grew up with a mother and two aunts in my house, so I mm -hmm. kind of like had three mothers all the time. And I needed <laughs> to get away right. and, and become self-disciplined. Mm -hmm. And the military was really good for me for that. Right. Okay. Um, what did you do for fun during your leave time? Uh, we spent a lot of time just playing cards and watching movies. Okay. Uh, did you receive any awards or decorations for your time in the military? Uh, the standard Vietnam service campaign, and then we received a combat action. The ship received that one for the night we were hit. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Did you, do you still have any of your uniforms, photos? I see that you brought some of your photos and we'll get to those in a little bit. 
or uh, mementos of your time in service? No, other than, than pictures, I don't have anything left. Okay. Um, what was life like after the war when you came home? Do you remember how you were treated or where did you come back home to? I came back to Pittsburgh. Well, we flew into Treasure Island to get separated from the, from the Navy. Mm -hmm. uh, so you didn't leave the base. And when I come home, I flew into Pittsburgh, and the first thing I did is went to the men's room and changed out of my dress whites into mm -hmm. regular clothes. Because uh, on our second captain, well, actually, it was Admiral Zumal to change the roles and kind of let you go with longer hair and some of the other stuff. So I didn't stand out as having a skinhead, so you stood out as, you didn't stand out as being a military person. Right. But I, I grew up in a little town in, in Pittsburgh. It's called Morningside, and uh, it it really supported the war. There were there weren't any that I know of any protesters. Right. Uh, we had a few later on who had served that uh, were dissatisfied with how they felt things were going, uh, and they were, but they didn't they didn't challenge you at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wasn't spit on. Nobody called me a baby killer. Uh, when I came home, it was it was pretty innocuous, I guess. It was okay. <coughs> Did you uh, marry and start a family when you got home? No, not not for a long time. <laughs> well, I, I guess I shouldn't say a long time. <coughs> I got out of the service in '71. I went back to school. Uh, met my wife a few years later. Uh, we've been married now. We just had our 40th anniversary. Okay. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Three kids. I, I was working at Duquesne University, so they all got a free education. Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah. Very good. Um, so you were a teacher. You went to school when mm -hmm. you were a teacher? or No, I managed a data center at Duquesne okay, University. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> I was an IT guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, are you active, or do you belong to any of the veterans' organizations in the you county? You know that answer. <laughs> I know, but I have to ask. DAV, VFW, American Legion, all three of the groups here in, in Taylorsville. Okay. Uh, I had belonged to the DAV when I was in Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. but I never did anything with them other than being a member. It wasn't until I got down here and, and met a few people and was able to actually become active in the groups. Right. Okay. Well, very good. We're glad you're very active. Um, and you said that your dad was um, in the military and your uncle? Yeah, his brother served in the Army. Okay. Uh, I don't know anything about him other than that. I have okay. one picture of him. Okay. So those are the only family members that you're aware of yes. that was military. Um, what would you say to the youth today if they were interested in the military? Go. Uh, I, I would recommend that they go through basic training and at least one year of active service, mm -hmm. even if it's just reserves. Mm -hmm. The discipline that they will, will find that they, they won't even know they're getting it because they just don't understand. Uh, but they would, well, they, I think when they were done with their time, they would understand some of the discipline that, 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 that they needed. Right. Uh, I, I've always felt that they should, I'd say basic training in two years, but that's a lot of, for a kid to come out of high school. But mm -hmm. I, I would like to see the, find, the government to find a way to make it so that everybody coming out would get basic training at least one year of service, even if it's reserve. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, do you have anything else you'd like to say? No. Join us for Coffee Call. <laughs> <laughs> you want to tell about that? Well, every Tuesday morning we have coffee call at the DAV building at Kerrigan Road. We have uh, coffee, donuts for anybody who shows up. You do not have to be a member of any of the groups. Uh, it's just a chance to get together with some veterans and sit around and BS. And what we have found is some of the veterans have had the chance to open up a little bit. We've also found out that it's just a great you hear a lot of good stories. You hear I'm some sure horrible <laughs> stories, but you hear some great stories. Mm -hmm. I'm also, uh, I'm diabetic. I'm collecting disability for Agent Orange. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, well, three years ago now, I was diagnosed with cancer, mm -hmm. and I was on disability from that also. Uh, I'm in remission from that, so that, that's a good thing. Very good. Okay. 
Anything else? No, that about covers it. Okay. Well, thank you for your service and <clears throat> thank, thank you. you for the interview. You're welcome. Okay. okay. Um, we got some uh, photos of Ray while he was in the Navy. He's going to share with us um, what all these pictures are of. <laughs> Uh, this was when I was stationed in Pensacola, Florida. I was part of the honor guard down there. Uh, every Friday they would have a graduation class of the Air Force, mm -hmm. or the Air Force, the, the Navy pilots, and we would do a uh, presentation for all the admirals that would show up. You had a different admiral every week. Right. This is when we were on board ship on the Krishna. Uh, this was our really, really fancy sleeping areas. You can see the, the bottom area here was our lockers, and you got this one-inch pad you got to sleep on, and you had probably two-foot clearance up above you. And we got these really fancy shoes when we got over there, too. So how many times <laughs> did you whack your head on the bunk on top? <laughs> um, not as often as the knee knockers have gone through the, the hatches when you're going from compartment to compartment. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this was my work area on the ship. I had a desk. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had purchased some stereo equipment when I was there, so a good portion of my desk. I had speakers and a tape recorder, and then I gave myself a little bit of space to work there yet. <laughs> <laughs> you had priorities. <laughs> yeah, and this was when I was hard at work uh -huh. on board ship. <laughs> Smoked the pipe when I was there and uh, not afterwards, so. We were hit when we were, when I was aboard, and this is the morning after when we went in to try to clean up a little bit. Mm -hmm. This is me and three of the gentlemen that I worked with. Uh, wow. This is this is Hawkins, and he tells me he wasn't on board when that happened, but I have proof that he was there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this was my battle station, 50 caliber. I was forward, uh, starboard side. Mm-hmm. Uh, the night we were hit, we were told we weren't allowed to fire on the fr starboard side because we had friendlies in the area. So port side was allowed to open up and we just kind of had to sit there with our heads down. Oh dear. This is one of the ways we find to entertain ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, we played a lot of games, Monopoly uh, and cards. And I also find a fishing rod. So I was right. able to do some fishing <laughs> when I was over there. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> and when I reported on board, this is how we got there. Uh, they had flew the helicopters in, landed on one of the barges beside the ship. That's also how we got our mail and some of our supplies. Mm -hmm. Okay with that? <clears throat> yeah, that's good. This is the night we were hit. Uh, it went about three quarters of the way through the ship. Uh, I was actually working in the supply room when we were hit. A gentleman came in asked me to go back and get some C batteries and went out back to get his batteries. We were hit and it came through about 15 feet in front of me. Wow. So I, one time I had some shrapnel that I pulled out of the, the shelving in us. I have no idea where that, that has gone. Mm -hmm. The barges were tied up alongside and then the ships as they came in were just tied up one beside each other. Mm -hmm. When you had... Uh, Duty, you're, one of the things we had to do is throw six grenades off of each side of the ship every hour. So you had to walk out on every one of these ships to the one that was out furthest and, and toss the grenades. So what what was the purpose of that? For they mines were, or They were something? percussion grenades. Okay. And if there was any sappers in the water, which means any swimmers that were coming out to... to uh, well, we find out later, this is how we were hit. We had... We were originally told that it was magnetic mine that floated down to hit us, and then later they found two dead sappers alongside of the river. And so they determined then that we were hit by sappers. Mm -hmm. But the, the percussion grenades would go off and explode, I think somewhere in there I had a picture, but I don't remember where it is. But anyway, it's, uh, it would just compress their chest and they would die that way. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that was our because obviously with any of the firearms that we had on board ship, we didn't have anything big. Uh, our big armament was 40 millimeter pom-poms that were uh, forward and bow and stern. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, we, that would have no impact at all on anybody coming out to, to do the ship, right. try to hit the ship. Right. This is Saigon, and this is one of the statues that was when uh, North Vietnam took over, one of the first things that they pulled down. Mm -hmm. And this is some other pictures of uh, downtown Saigon. Just a lot of. This is above <coughs> the next. This was taken the next morning. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were hit below and above the sea line, water line. And uh, what they had to do is they had to list the ship to about 20 degrees mm -hmm. to get enough out of the water to get the, uh, the guys down there. They had divers working to try to seal it up to get us back out of the, water, uh, back right. out of the rivers. Scary time. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I have a lot of pictures. I have no idea why it, why I took them. <laughs> well, I would say that is that a cow that just kind of wandered on to the. That no, that's where he was. There was I think he had a chain, oh, so okay. he only ate that area. <laughs> okay. They didn't want him going too far. And this is side. This was when we were in dry docks, and we uh -huh. took pictures from wow. going out. This is a fancy get up I had. This was, mm. a, that's when we were in Hong Kong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really about it I have here. Okay. Well, thank you so much okay. for bringing that and sharing with us.